Next up, uh, we have uh, Kebu Books, DIY Smart Port ROM, uh, Petar Puskarich. Hello, everybody out there. Um, my name is Petar Puskarich, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the Kebu HK Smart Port uh, ROM, um, and as it applies to various disk 2 controllers um, both the db19 and the disk 2 idc20 variety um, and in this case it'll end up being shown on my original apple 2 plus from when i was 12 years old so that was pretty neat that it, it still works as well um, i have a few different devices that i'll be showing you as well that it connects to and how to make those connections actually work and be safe with this particular setup since there is some um, definite uh, five volt voltage concerns uh, when you're uh, basically trying to convert a disk two card into a pseudo Lyron card uh, for three and a half inch support and uh, smart port uh, functionality. Um, this was a little mini project that I started back probably two years ago. Um, when the original smart port ROMs were released. Um, and at that time, he actually went through and actually provided this EEPROM download called the, the DIY SP, so the do-it-yourself smart port. Um, he provided that free of charge on the website, and it's still there today if it's back up. I have not seen the uh, KBU HK uh, website running in a while now. Um, they are currently up to version 3.0, and Rodney Ross was generous enough to ship me one of the new version 3 uh, EEPROM cards, and I'll be showing that shortly, um, which, um, well, we'll show what it goes and how, how it works. Um, and that card can go pretty much in any slot, and then when you PR boot it, um, it'll redirect everything over to slot 6 for whatever version of the card you have in, and then smart, smart port will just auto-magically work. Um, it's, it's pretty nifty. But recently, uh, there was a, another Facebook member uh, who got in touch with me and basically said, hey, try this out. I remodified the, the ROM. In this case, it was the, leave us the version 1.0 code, which only works in slot 5, which is, which is fine for most cases. Um, but it works on a super serial card, not only just the Grappler Plus card that KBU HK originally supported. So that should be kind of neat to show here. And uh, with that, I will transition over to some different cameras here and uh, kind of take you through the different pieces. Okay, so just as a, a little bit of show and tell, this will be my Apple II Plus um, that I originally got when I was 12 years old. Um, currently outfitted, you know, pretty stock, except it has a applied engineering uh, Pocket Rocket 16K card in it, so it doesn't need to have the, uh, the little RAM chip removed. Uh, let's see if I can show that in there. There it is, the little white socket it's filled. Um, that's a neat feature. And then also have an applied engineering 80 column card in here. Um, and that'll be used in my um, Apple Works video coming up uh, shortly as well. And currently as it sits in slot 5, I currently have a super serial card sitting in here. And it has, if I can get in there, the SSC SP code. So that's going to be essentially the 2K of EEPROM code um, burned on to a 2732 chip, but I binary doubled that particular uh, code in order to fit on that and then also be compatible with the socket. So it's a 2732 basically riding on a 2716 socket, and that's how you do that. You basically take the code and you duplicate it down to the, the higher addresses and then it, it works. Um, but if you basically find a 2716, program it up, boom, it, it's working. Okay, so to get started here, uh, let me take you through 
a tour of the rest of the, the goodies I have to show. So to start off with, this little guy will be the version 3 kboohk.com, the 2019 version. Um, that's the, the actual card that these other ones are emulating, essentially. And um, it's similar code, um, but this one's just a, a, a larger code base that can go in any slot. Um, let's see, I've got normal disk, normal disk 2 card. Um, this little gem, I think it in here, is a smart port S-Disk card from Rodney Ross that he sent me to use, and um, it works pretty cool. Um, I believe it currently has a 32 meg um, ProDOS volume on it for the, uh, and it boots up on the Apple II Plus. So I'll show you that. Um, and as well as, as there is an actual disk two that is accessible, which I was kind of surprised to see actually work um, with this particular trick. Um, and then as well, I've got the standard, uh, this is the Rev B uh, floppy EMU from Big Muscle Wires. And then I've got, for right now, I've got the standard cable and the standard end that he provides on that. Um, let's see. About 20 minutes ago, I actually pulled this one off and actually took a regular, the uh, Unidisc um, five and a quarter drive and um, basically remove pin 12 on it, which goes to pin 16 on the DB19. Um, so you can actually plug stuff directly into it. So Rodney Ross's adapter will go directly on that shortly as well. Um, let's see. And then finally, down here, there's the one I originally started with was the Grappler Plus card. And that one will show. And then finally, one of my original um, the ASCO Ly Lyron cards. Um, so yeah, everything kind of works. So what I'm going to try to do next is let's go. Well, okay, we'll just we'll pull out the uh, super serial card here, and let's go and put in the regular the KBU HK card. And it goes rear, and we'll put it in slot five to be consistent. All right, that's in there. All right, and then let's go ahead then and go from what most nor what most people will be starting out with will be a regular disc two card. So we'll have that put in here, and we'll hook up the modified cable. So let's see if I can show that in there. There's a little gap in there, that air gap. That's on pin 12 of a standard IDC 20 cable. And that is mandatory for using this particular feature. Um, and then once you get once you do that, it's just pin one to pin one on the disk two controller card in the drive one position. Um, I have not tried disk two. I don't recommend it yet. Um, not exactly sure if, if anything will work um, or what will happen there. It might actually show up as disk um, five, disk two. I have not actually tried that yet. So we'll use that special cable and connect it back to the Rev B Lyron. And it just slides back in normally. And this particular setup, I've got Total Replay running on the machine. And let's double check. So we've got slot five with his in there. And actually double check, make sure it's in there. Yeah, so he has it marked rear and, uh, rear and keyboard just so you don't put it in backwards. And that's also very important. Pin one goes to pin one because you don't want to short that out either. All right, that looks good. So now we'll turn it on. It'll come up, and you'll see a little bit there. Nothing. Hit control reset. And this particular machine does not have the speaker hooked up because our master bedroom is right below me, and my wife gets really um, animated <laughs> whenever she hears the beep a lot for all these reboots. So that's what that's about. So here's PR number five. And if all goes well, there it is, total replay. And it pops right up. 
And I'll see in here. Yeah, everything's alive and well on the uh, floppy EMU. I'll say, we'll go hit A, let it go to another screen. So, yep, all is well and good. That's pretty cool. So that's with the regular KBOO HK card. All right, so let's just remove that one now. So let me say pulling that out. It's removed out of the machine. Now let's play with the original one, and this is what they call the DIY SP 2.0 code base running in the Grappler Plus card. And if you have a Grappler Plus card and a 2732 EEPROM sitting around, you can take their online code, burn it to the chip, um, put it in the, uh, the Grappler Plus, and so far you've noticed that the dip switches don't make any difference at all, but I have mine set all, all off. And since this is version 2 code, it can go in any slot, but I normally choose to put it in 5 to, you know, just to emulate the Lyron. So, okay, so it's in slot 5. Haven't changed anything else. Let's bring up the machine again. Do the control reset. And then here, PR number 5. And there's Total Replay. Basically booted off a Grappler Plus card. Um, so pretty interesting that that even works at all. It's just kind of mind-blowing to me at times. Um, let's go S. There, okay, C Fox. Um, and so here we'll go and let it load up. And then it'll, it's accessing the floppy EMU at the moment. Let's see if C Fox actually loads all the way. I don't know if I tried that on the 2 Plus yet. It looks like it's trying to load something. Uh, okay, so maybe that one doesn't like my Apple 2 Plus. So that's reboot. That's fine. And sometimes I've noticed that with some of the games, they don't like loading um, off of the smart port that, that much like this, but they do work perfectly on the Lyron. So there could be some of the reason why there's some moderate differences between the releases that they have. All right, let's try another one. We'll go B, has Bolo, we'll play. Oh, okay, well, that one doesn't like that either. But that's the way usually demos go, but it is booting up, and it's pretty cool that way. All right, so let's take that back out. So that's the Grappler Plus card we went through. Now let's go through the Super Serial card again. So that was one I had there before. Again, there's the, the SSP ROM with the white sticker at the bottom. That's just this, uh, took out the normal EEPROM, that, not the EEPROM, the actual PROM that was there, removed it, and then burned a 2732 with the version 1 code. And I put that in slot 5. And we will bring that up now. Control reset. Here, number five. And again, it just it it just works. Things come up. Uh, things generally load pretty well. Um, this particular Apple II Plus does have some some memory issues. I have a feeling I'm going to have to address sooner than later, which could be a lot of what's going on. But um, yeah, for the most part, uh, Total Replay works generally well. Uh, let's go here. We'll try D. What's it? No, no D. How about R? Yeah, okay, there's a different one. So that's kind of booting off both the cards. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, and it works. Now, one of the, th the things I mentioned earlier were that this evening was that I found a way to safely 
instead of using the disk two card, if you have an extra Unidisc five and a quarter controller laying around. So, you know, that's the standard with the DB19 on the end. The trick there is you need to basically, well, if, you, if it's the colored cable on it, it's, it's the red wire, which is actually in position 12, counting from the, uh, the top down. And it's position 12 and goes to pin 16 of the DB19. And again, that's imperative that you cut that wire, or else you will burn up whatever drive you connect to these things. Um, and then again, and since this is now modified, it will not work with the five and a quarter inch floppies anymore. So that's just one thing to consider with this. It's, it's, you know, it's kind of a hack, but it works. And it works pretty cool, actually. All right, so now we have the Unidisc controller in there. So now I'm going to put Rodney Ross's little guy back in. And let's see what happens there. And I'm going to hang that off the back, and it usually comes up just fine. And then I'll show you that. So there, do the control reset again. And on his adapter, uh, if I can show that in there, that there should be a little green uh, ready light there whenever things are fully up and running. And we'll say PR number five. And if we're lucky, it'll boot ProDOS. And there it is. Um, like I had some issues a little bit ago where it wasn't quite syncing all the way. But I think that's due to some RAM in this particular machine. Um, this one's got, whoops. So yeah, it loaded up. And let's go down here to utilities. We'll do copy to plus. And we'll skip that. But here's some neat stuff I found. So OK, so we've got the different drives that are loaded that are on that machine. So HD1 was the main one that we're booting. Uh, my video sinks a little. And there's the you know, six free 64468. So we got 32 meg partition on here. So it actually is working full pro, you know, full smart port on you know, ProDOS. And that's cool. But what happens now, this was surprising, that off this card, it does have slot 5 drive 2 enabled. And this one apparently has Apple II GS uh, folders on it for booting. So that was kind of neat that that even works. Um, let's try, I can try this live too. I have not tried slot two drive one or drive two yet. Oh, okay. So it is fully mapping all of the ProDOS partitions. And that is pretty cool. So if you do have a floppy EMU, um, or you know, in one of these SD cards, or any of the uh, basically any of the disk emulators that support the large ProDOS um, block file systems, you can use them with this method, and it works works great. Um, trying to think anything else they did. Oh, okay. One of the last things I'm going to show you is another cable that I made, and this one is a DB19 male, but it, and it also has the IDC20 with the pin 12 air gap on it. And what that, this cable will do, and this cable originally was meant to connect a, to retrofit a disc two onto one of these unit disc five and a quarter um, mechanisms. Um, but what it originally allowed me to do was actually connect then the, the floppy EMU to the, um, the Unidisc controller. So it's kind of like using it in reverse of what it was, what was meant to be. Um, and again, the whole idea is uh, from the Unidisc controller or the Disc 2 controller, um, you basically have to you have to basically make sure that you are isolating that pin 12 um, that goes that goes out from the disk 2 controller. Um, or depending on where your adapter is, it's going to be pin 16 
on the external sides of your DB19 connectors. So pin 12, pin 16. And that's essentially what I have, have done today uh, with these. Um, I will be posting some links in the uh, Discord channel uh, for the HBUHK, uh, well, the, the uh, do-it-yourself SP1 code and your do-it-yourself SP2 code. SP3, uh, SP3, to my knowledge, has not been released yet. Um, and then as well as that, um, I will try to um, put any other documentation I have found, especially some of the stuff from uh, Big Mess of Wires um, on the different signaling methods that are being used. So you, you don't blow up your very rare Unidisc three and a half drives. Um, but yeah, as long as you isolate and, and only use the drive that it's meant to. Um, so don't, don't do a PR number six with this attached to it. Um, probably not a, a good thing because it's going to try to do the signaling as a disk 2 and not an Apple actual smart port device. Um, yeah, so with that, um, I hope you uh, enjoyed the session and um, yeah, definitely leave me some comments in uh, the uh, Discord channel and uh, if you have you know questions, comments, whatever, I will uh, make every attempt to give a good answer and I get back to you. Um, and then you can usually find me as uh, Petar Paskarich on uh, Facebook. Uh, that's my, my primary hangout on the different uh, different retro channels and different F, uh, Facebook groups. So great, thank you and um, enjoy the rest of the conference.